Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Impact Wrestling Press Podcast. I'm Tom Hannafin. We are live on our Facebook channel. I want to thank everybody for joining us here. I'll allow the media to file their way in. In a matter of moments, I'll be joined by one of the newest signings to Impact Wrestling, of course, an Impact original in Frankie Kazarian, the five-time X Division champion. Very excited to have Frankie with us for this edition of the Press Pass. Uh, before we dive into things, uh, I want to just give a quick reminder to everybody that's watching about our upcoming events in Impact Wrestling. Obviously, next month we're going to be in Las Vegas for sacrifice, or excuse me, for no surrender, pardon me. Next month we're going to be in Las Vegas at Samstown Casino for no surrender. That'll be live on Impact Plus, Fight TV, and YouTube for our Ultimate Insiders. That's on Friday, February 24th. We'll, of course, have two nights of fallout, which is uncommon for us, so we hope everybody will join us on Saturday the 25th and Sunday the 26th for two nights of fallout in Las Vegas. Tickets are on sale now for those events, as well as our highly touted return to Canada. Of course, Impact Wrestling has deep ties uh, in Canada, our parent company, Anthem Sports and Entertainment, based in Toronto. Uh, first off, it'll be our first events back in Canada in March for Sacrifice, as I was trying to get to before. The 14th Sacrifice event will be live as well on Impact Plus, Fight TV, and YouTube for our Ultimate Insiders. That'll be on Friday, March 24th, and then we'll have the fallout from that event the night after on Saturday, March 25th. Tickets are on sale now for those events as well. And that is the first time we'll be back in Canada in three years. Also, coming up in April, it'll be our first time back in Toronto since 2019. We'll be live on pay-per-view and fight TV for Rebellion on Sunday, April 16th, and the night after is all the fallout from Rebellion on Monday, April 17th. Tickets are on sale now for all of these events that I just mentioned. Now, many of you may have seen on social media, digital media from Impact Wrestling that we have a big announcement regarding our events in 2023. This is a first for Impact Wrestling. Impact is proud to present its inaugural season pass for three high-profile multi-day events in Chicago. Join us for Spring Slugfest, that's on April 28th and 29th. Also, Chicago Heat on July 28th and 29th. And finally, in October, it's our biggest pay-per-view of the year, Bound for Glory. That's part of two nights of action on October 20th, obviously, and on the 21st. But you have to act quickly. Here's what's going to happen. The Chicago season pass ticket will be available only for two weeks beginning this Friday. That's January 27th at 10 a.m. Eastern. You have to visit impactwrestling.com for all the information. This is your chance to join us three times in Chicago in 2023. Now, this is very important. This two-week window is the earliest that you can secure tickets for Bound for Glory, our biggest event of the year, before the event's official on sale later this year. So we're very excited about this. This is the first time ever for Impact Wrestling. Uh, to chime in on this, I do want to finally welcome my official guest for this Impact Wrestling press pass, Mr. Frankie Kazarian, who is back in the fold in Impact Wrestling as of the Hard to Kill pay-per-view. So Frankie, off the top, any great memories in Chicago? It's frankly one of the best wrestling cities in the world. I mean, you said it, uh, you know, Chicago is synonymous with professional wrestling and I've wrestled there uh, numerous, numerous times throughout my career, you know, both in uh, independent events and small little venues and, you know, at the former Sears Center and giant events. And uh, that city has such a rich uh, history with professional wrestling and it's, you know, the crowds are notoriously loud and invested. Uh, and it just, uh, it, it may be one of the best, if not the best wrestling towns in the United States. So I, uh, am psyched to be back in Chicago, not once, not twice, but three times. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I think that's going to be really cool for the fans of Chicago to see impact wrestling in three separate, uh, different occasions leading up to bound for glory, which is the the big one for for us for impact wrestling so yeah i'm psyched that's great news yeah i'm i'm excited chicago is always so much fun uh to perform in front of uh we're gonna get to the media here in just a moment i do want to remind all media members please limit your questions to one question for frankie kazarian we are expecting a number of media outlets on this call so we just want to make sure everybody gets their opportunity so please limit it to one question apiece frankie before we let the media dive in here i want to address the elephant in the room, I know there's probably a lot of media members that are going to ask uh, this question. Uh, you mentioned Bound for Glory. 
able to return to Impact Wrestling. Uh, this past Bound for Glory, a few weeks before that, obviously, you competed at Bound for Glory, won your fifth X Division title. You cashed in option C. You challenged for the Impact World Championship at Overdrive against Josh Alexander, a, a phenomenal match. Uh, but then you returned to your contract at AEW, and it was revealed at Hard to Kill that you are now officially signed to Impact Wrestling. Can you articulate for us what the transition was from your time ending at AEW to deciding to return home to impact wrestling. Sure. Um, so, uh, my, uh, contract, um, was coming up to get rolled over. I still had two years left on my existing AEW contract and, um, a call was made to me in early December to, uh, discuss rolling me over And the, uh, office I had said that they wanted to roll me over and, you know, this was my opportunity to kind of say, um, you know, that's not really something I'm looking at right now. And uh, I, I have other goals and other aspirations and other things I'd like to do. And so we had a conversation on the phone and then uh, met in person at, um, at a uh, live dynamite taping uh, towards the end of last year. And uh, I basically kind of voiced my concerns, my aspirations, my frustrations, had very long talks and said that, you know, this is, um, uh, kind of like what I said on, 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 on impact, uh, you know, I want to bet on myself. Like I, you know, I'm, I'm not a guy that's wired to sit on the sidelines. I'm not a guy that can only be half in. I want to be all in. I want to be doing this at the highest level as long as I possibly can. And the time, you know, this was my window. And I said, you know, if, 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 if the trajectory that I'm going on now is going to continue, I would like to go elsewhere. And, you know, they said they wanted to do right by me and which I appreciate. And, uh, you know, so as of December 31st, I was um, let out of my contract and I was free to go wherever I wanted to go. And that just happened to be Impact Wrestling. Um, I do ask that the media members, uh, you know, respect this situation with Frankie. Obviously, contract situations can always be touchy. I imagine everybody has a similar question regarding the AEW, so I want to make sure that everybody gets their chance to get that answer here from Frankie off the bat. Uh, before we get to the media, Frankie, that stretch that I mentioned between Bound for Glory and Overdrive, was that enough in your mind to flip the switch and say, you know what, impacts the right spot for me? Well, you know, it... it Impact gave me the opportunity to prove that I can still go against the best in the game. Because when you're talking about guys like Mike Bailey and you're talking about guys like Josh Alexander, those are the best in the game. And uh, all I ever wanted my entire career was an opportunity to be in there with the guys that are the best because I consider myself one of the best. So uh, just having that opportunity, being around this version of the Impact locker room, which I you know fell in love with immediately, was uh, it was just the energy and the passion and the positivity that that locker room has. All of it kind of just really, you know, really got me thinking that, you know, this, uh, if there's an opportunity to be here, not as a guy coming in as a visitor, but as a full-time guy, I would really like to, um, to, to, to perhaps try that. Uh, it just, you know, obviously when you have a match the caliber of the one I did against Mike or Josh, you know, it, it does a lot for your confidence and it proved that I can still go. And um, I, I, like I've said countless times, the thing I can offer to anybody that's most valuable is my time and who I give that time to, I want them to value it. And uh, I feel that it is valued here with Scott DeMore and with everybody at Impact Wrestling. And uh, that was a huge determining factor in me uh, making this decision. We're thrilled to have you in Impact. I know I've had a hell of a time getting to call your matches, work with you. It's just, it's been a, a dream come true. So I'm thrilled about it. Um, and again, I asked some media members. Uh, we're we're here to talk about Frankie and Impact Wrestling going forward. So uh, hopefully we've answered all questions in regards to AEW. And please limit your questions to one apiece going forward. So without further ado, let's get to our first member of the media. This is uh, Jim from the Miami Herald. Jim, how are you? Hey, good. Thanks. Thanks for being aboard, Frankie. Congratulations on signing. And I'm just curious, where are the goals? Where, what's going on now for you? I mean, when you're first starting out, obviously there are different goals, maybe. But now you've been doing it for a while, doing it very well. Where are you at right now mentally? And what are your thoughts about what are your goals for Impact Wrestling for you? Well, obviously, I still have a lot of goals uh, inside a wrestling ring. That's, you know, that's what I want. I want, you know, I want a jersey and I want to be in the game and I want to be leading the team down the field to uh, win the Super Bowl. 
You know, I, uh, I feel that I'm in a place in my career with what I bring to the table in terms of in-ring skill and what I bring to a locker room in terms of knowledge and maturity. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I think I'm a real good fit. So I have a lot of goals in terms of guys I want to wrestle with. I have a lot of goals in terms of championships that I would like to have, that I'd like to add to this wall. And, uh, and beyond that, I want to help continue to make Impact Wrestling grow because Impact was very important to me very early on in my career. Uh, it gave me my first real big platform to show the world what I can do. So I want to help this company grow in every way I can. I want to help the locker room. I want to help management. Uh, I want to help get the word out uh, just about the product and uh, pretty much do everything I can to help this company and, uh, and just continue the growth process for myself personally, professionally, and for the company. Jim, thank, thank you, you very much. We appreciate thank it. You. Love your Ray Finkel jersey, by the way. That's beautiful. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Next up is uh, Ashley from T. It's not Einhorn, it's Finkel. It <laughs> laces out. Uh, next up uh, is Ashley from TWM News. Ashley, good to see you again. I was muted. Hello, Tom. Good to see you again. Frankie, awesome Hi. to see you here, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Saw you live. You did amazing. You, you're just a phenomenal performer. I'm just so honored to be here on this lovely panel with you um uh, other than you know going for world champion because i think you can do it i think 2023 it's a new year new upcoming events are being announced with impact what would you like to see um happen with impact in 2023 this year i mean again like going back to what i answered before like the growth you know i I would love to see more eyeballs on the product because I think what impact is doing right now in terms of, you know, producing quality wrestling television is second to none. Uh, you know, you've got some really interesting characters. You've got some amazing uh, uh, in-ring action. Uh, you know, impact has never failed to deliver when it comes to in-ring. So, I mean, I would just like to help in any small way, shape or form that I can to get more eyeballs on the product and to get, you know, I, I, I think people like, Again, I'm going to keep going back to this. Guys like Josh Alexander and Mike Bailey and the Motor City Machine Guns and, you know, Rich Swan and those guys, they should be household names. And I'm going to do whatever I can to help uh, to help, you know, excel that process and move it forward. And just, you know, a lot of people may have, you know, went away from Impact Wrestling because, you know, obviously years ago there was a lot of management changes and a lot of things that maybe turn people off, but I I'm here to tell everybody that this product is firing on all cylinders right now. And I'm, uh, and if it wasn't, I wouldn't be here and I'm very psyched to be here and I want the world to, to know what I already know. Awesome. I'm glad to hear it. Once again, welcome back. So happy to see you and I'll catch you at a live event sometime this year. Thank you, Tom, for uh, him, um, having thank you, you. Ashley. No, thank, thank you, you, Ashley. We appreciate it. Uh, up next is Tyler from Count It Out in Canada. I love Count It Out. What's going on, man? Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. Good to see you again. Tom, good to see you again. Uh, Frankie, thank you for taking my question. Sure. Um, so, Frankie, I got to ask you, you are one of the uh, most decorated superstars in Impact Wrestling history. When you look back at everything you've done, do you have a couple moments that stand out for you as something special? And when you look at this roster now, is there a couple of people that are standing out to you that, that you can't wait to get in the ring with? Yeah, I mean, like, there's so many firsts for me, my very first run at Impact, like, you know, being involved in the first ever uh, Ultimate X match was huge, especially to see what that match has become. To be a guy that was one of the first three guys in that match is very special. Winning my first uh, X Division title, uh, that was my first major title, and to win it live on pay-per-view, was uh, very special. Winning the tag team titles with Christopher Daniels the first time was amazing. Um, you know, there's just, there's so many, uh, so many firsts, like being, you know, the first time we got on Fox sports net, the first time we got on spike, the first time we were on prime time, all those, all those memories are very, very special to me. Uh, and in terms of people I want to wrestle on the roster, literally I want to wrestle with everybody. I mean, there's so many intriguing matchups. I mean, like, you know, you look at a guy like Eddie Edwards, who I've known for 15 plus years, never been in the ring with him in a singles match. Uh, you know, the same can be said with a guy like Rich Swan. Uh, again, uh, going back to like two of my favorite guys on the roster, Josh Alexander and, and uh, Speedball Mike Bailey. Uh, 
just top to bottom, there's so many incredibly talented guys. And um, I, you know, now that I am here full time, I want to get in there with everybody, like literally everybody on the roster. So thank you so much, guys. Can't wait to see you guys back in Canada soon. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Yeah, very soon. Yeah. March and April, we're, we're going to be back. Uh, just a reminder to everybody, I should have mentioned this off the top, uh, please raise your virtual hand uh, to ask a question, and we will try and get to you uh, so you guys can talk to Frankie. Uh, up next is Bill from WrestleZone.com. Bill, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Long time no see, Tom. I know. It's been forever. How you doing? <laughs> uh, good. Uh, Frankie, you've been talking a lot about stuff uh you want to do in your return uh you mentioned a few firsts but the last time we spoke uh you said that you have another ultimate x match in you so a lot's changed now that's a possibility now you're here full-time with impact is that something you're kind of pushing for too do you like when do you see that happening if at all well i wouldn't say i'm necessarily pushing for it but however this um i believe august marks the 20th year uh the 20th anniversary of that very first ultimate x match uh i don't know the exact date but i believe is sometime in august um wouldn't be a better time if you asked me to you know celebrate that match and everything that uh you know that has been done in that match than to have one more and uh if i have one more in me at least that might be the one uh you know that i think of all the like quote unquote gimmick matches that's one of the most unique and um, thrilling that's come around in the last couple of decades, um, you know, going past with the ladder match brought to the table. Uh, and it's a staple of, and it's unique to impact and it's, you can only see it in impact wrestling. So if we're going to do another one uh, and we're going to, uh, you know, give that match the due diligence it deserves uh, let's do it on the anniversary or close to the anniversary and, uh, and see maybe Chris Saban's still up for one, who knows, man, and see if there's another couple guys that want to get in the mix. All right. August 20th, just putting it out there. August 20th. There we go. It right. is a Sunday. Uh, and that mm. was once upon a time in Nashville. I wonder if Saban would be up for that bump that he took, I think in the second ultimate X match where he just couldn't get the title down. A lot of us would probably not be up for a lot of the bumps we've taken, but you, you just know have Chris man? do it again. Yeah, we'll have yeah. Chris do it again. Yeah, be in, in the name of entertainment, we're you know we're we're down to do whatever we need to do. <laughs> Bill, thank you very much for joining thank us. Thank you, we appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Uh, we are of course going around the world. Want to thank everybody that's been covering uh, Impact Wrestling worldwide. So uh, let's head to New Zealand. Our good friend David Dunn from NZPW. David, how are you? Good morning, guys. Thank you very much for having me. Um, Frankie, a lot of people today have been talking about this is your, your return to Impact Wrestling, you're back home, things like that. And in many ways, it is the same company that you rose to prominence with. But in many ways, it is a different company. You know? There is this new management, new ownership, um, even a new name, technically. How much does this feel like a homecoming for you versus sort of a new chapter and, you know, moving forward? And, you know, how similar is it versus how different does it feel? Great question, because, you know, in a lot of ways, it feels very different. Um, again, looking at the locker room and, you know, seeing a lot of, uh, you know, some familiar faces for sure, but a lot of new faces in this crop of hungry young men and women that just want to uh, show the world what they can do. You know, it reminds me of the old TNA, which I was part of, you know, the young guy wanting to show what I can do. Uh, and yeah, it still says Impact Wrestling, but um, there's a lot of things that were different. I mean, I went through you know, several management changes and several regime changes and, and being on different networks and on pay-per-view. And, you know, at, at times the company looked very, very different than it does now. Um, but, you know, I've, I've obviously, I, I know everybody in management. No, I've met uh, people involved in Anthem. Uh, everybody's so excited about it. So it's, uh, you know, it's it's cool because, you know, you have the history of, of impact of TNA, whatever, you know, whatever term you want to use, depending on what time you're talking about. And that's where my, you know, that's where my catalog is by and large. Uh, you know, I spent more time there than anywhere else. So that's another reason it's cool to be back. Like when you, you know, when you write the book on Frankie Kazarian, you know, you got to play the clips that happened in impact and you hear, you know, Don West and Mike Tanay, you know, doing play by play and color on my matches. So, you know, it's, um, it's, it's very, very similar. Uh, but, you know, again, I think it's uh, very different and I think it's different in a very good way in terms of ownership and in terms of management and creative and everything we're doing right now. Awesome. Thanks for your time. Looking forward to seeing everything you. you do this year. Appreciate it. 
Thank you, David. Uh, as I mentioned, we're international. Uh, let's go to India, where it's 1 a.m., so thank you for your commitment. Uh, are you Nava from Sports Kita? How are you? Hello, everyone. Uh, Tom, Azarian, it's an honor to uh, get the chance to speak to both of you. Um, thank you. Uh, I have to uh, ask this. I think, I mean, uh, I need to ask this, that in ROH, in impact, we are seeing a blend uh, over the last few years, even before uh, when Impact was under a different banner. And we all know the unfortunate news, uh, what happened to Jay Briscoe. Uh, and you, for one, you have had a lot of matches with the Briscoe brothers, be it in Impact, be it in ROH. And seeing that ROH title uh, on background, I felt like asking this. Uh, would you share how much uh, those matches mean to you? How was it like working with the two of them? And your thoughts on the situation, if you would like to. Yeah. Um, oh, God. You know, Jay was such a special guy. Um, one of my favorite people to walk into a locker room and see. Uh, you know, I was I was friends with both those guys outside of the locker room um and every match i had with those guys was if not good great and it wasn't because of me it was because of those guys um jay brought and mark bring such a unique presence to the ring he brought such a um you know he has such a just an intensity factor about him and um they loved this business and the way they evolved and how much success they had and you know it's all of that is, you know, is trumped by the fact that they're such good human beings, such good natured, lovely human beings. Uh, I, so many special matches with those guys. I mean, the first, my, my first, uh, when I first got to our ring of honor, the first match Chris Daniels and I had against them, uh, I had so many matches against them and the young bucks, uh, my, myself and Scorpio sky wrestled those guys uh, at the kickoff to the all in pay-per-view. Uh, in an amazing match. I had uh, my last matches in Ring of Honor were a uh, ladder wars with them and the Young Bucks. And my last official match in the company in Ring of Honor was a match against the Briscoes. And I could not have asked for better guys to, um, you know, to go out against. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I, I can only echo what the world is saying, but I mean, I was, you know, when I found out, I was shocked. I was sick to my stomach. I was numb. I couldn't sleep for a couple of days. It, you know, it still, it still doesn't feel real to me. Um, it's, you know, it's sinking in, but it's just, uh, you, you know, we have these tragedies in wrestling all the time and we all deal with loss and we all go through loss a lot, but um, this one hit me so hard because it was, I mean, when you talk about tragedy, it clicks all the boxes. I mean, he was young at the top of his game, a family man taking his daughters. To, it just, everything about it just makes me ill. And um yeah, I, I'm still dealing with it. I haven't really processed it, but I am still dealing with it. Um, you know, all I can say is I, I hope now the world, if they didn't before, knows the type of man that Jay was, the type of family man that he was. Um, you know, I can picture him rolling around in the ring with my son when we would, you know, have shows that were close to California and he would, he would be in there, you know, goofing off, acting like a kid. And yeah, just so many, so many great memories at, you know, at hotel bars and just on the road and a funny story driving into Canada with me and the Briscoes and AJ Styles. And they took one look in the car and like, what are you guys doing here? And uh, we're here to wrestle to pull over, like <laughs> just looking at us. They knew, you know, they knew we were up to no good, but obviously we got through and uh, just, you know, we were all laughing about it. Um, yeah, just, um, just tragic just just tragic um all i know is that going forward i uh to honor jay all i can do is try to be a, a better wrestler a better husband and a better father and a better man i really appreciate you opening up uh, about this situation thanks thank you thanks man thank you Aryanava. appreciate it uh, where you continue our tour around the world from uh, New Zealand to India and now to Ireland. We're joined next by Jim from RCB Radio. Jim, how are you? Good day to you. Uh, first of all, Frankie Kazarian, massive fan. Uh, delighted to speak to you on the air this evening. Uh, 
Frankie, my question for you is going back a decade ago, the foundation of uh, TNA and Impact Wrestling was based on the stars like yourself, AJ Styles, Samoa and Joe, uh, Bobby Roode, uh, James Storm. You were the sort of core and you got great talent around you, experienced players. You brought in uh, Christian Cage, you brought in Kurt Dangle, you brought in players like that. Do you see, now you're coming back, you're the experienced star. Do you see that core group now in Impact Wrestling, this core new generation that you were at that time that can lead this company? Yeah, I mean, it's the guys that have been leading it. You know, it is the guys like the, you know, the Eddie Edwards who's been there for a very long time. I mean, he was, Eddie was there when, you know, on my t- my last few months of, with the company, Eddie was there. So he's been there a long time. Um, but, you know, then you go back to like, you know, you know, the Ace Austin and the Chris Bay and the Rich Swan and the Josh Alexanders and the Motor City Machine, you know, well, Motor City Machine Guns are more of my generation, but like all those guys, you know, and a guy like Moose, uh, all those guys have done such a great job of, you know, being that group of core talent that is there that, you know, stuck around when others chose to leave and that have, you know, really, you know, waved the flag of impact wrestling the same way that, you know, me and AJ Styles and Chris Daniels and, and uh, you know, PD Williams and those guys were back in the day, you know, it's cool to see those guys, you know, carry the company on their backs with so much pride and, and, you know, and, and just put themselves out there on behalf of impact wrestling. Uh, and, and I kind of do feel like that elder statesman, a guy that, you know, has, has, been there and I've, I've went on to do other things, but am now back. And, uh, you know, in the same way that Kurt Angle and Christian Cage and the Dudleys wanted to help this company grow, that's exactly what I'm here to do. But I have insider knowledge because I spent so much time uh, early in my career uh, in Impact Wrestling. So it's it's cool. You know, everything comes full circle. At one point, I was the, you know, the young kid, uh, you know, just happy to be part of a company, ready to break out and uh, was thankful for when veterans would come in and, and, you know, help move that process forward. And now I'm on the other side of that. And it's, uh, it's real cool. I'm glad I stuck around long enough to, uh, to, to see, you know, things like this happen. Cheers, Frankie. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jim. Uh, we were just in Ireland. So fitting that we go to Scotland now, let's check in with Lee from Alive Radio. Lee, how are you? I'm great, Tom. Thank you so much for taking the time. And Frank, it is great to have you back at Impact Wrestling, my friend. Very, very excited to see you debut. And one of the other things that I've been very excited about recently is the fact Impact Plus now has all these classic matches and classic episodes of Impact from 2010, when you were in one of my favorite factions of all time. I'm talking, of course, about Fortune. Uh, What was it like to be part of that great stable and if you were going to put together your own stable right now using the the stars of impact wrestling in that locker room male and female who would be in there my friend oof let me answer your first one first um being a fortune was very cool for me uh, at the time that group started i was kind of uh i wouldn't say floundering but i i you know was just kind of trying to find an identity i uh you know and then all of a sudden you know the decision was made to put me in there with with Ric Flair and immediately when you're in there with someone like that, that's, that's called getting the rub (laughs) in in case you don't know, anytime you're going to be on screen and Ric Flair is singing your praises or endorsing you, that's getting a rub. So I did not take that lightly at all. And I, I, you know, hung around Rick as much as I can and picked his brain and learned a lot and being out there with, you know, my friends like Bobby and AJ and, you know, just filming stuff and, you know, just, uh, it was, it was so much fun. Uh, And I think it raised my stock a lot. Uh, you know, really kind of cemented me as a player, you know, for the first time as a singles guy, that's not just an X division guy, you know, that kind of really gave me uh, the opportunity to, to have, you know, to be in the mix with just singles guys and not just kind of be pigeonholed as just an X division guy. So that was, um, that was, that was really cool. Uh, Like I said, I didn't take that lightly and, and you're not the only one to say that a lot of people, you know, anytime I'm at a signing or a show, people come up and talk about how much they enjoy fortune and, my only regret with that is I wish we could have ran with it a little bit longer because I think we still had legs. Uh, but, you know, those decisions weren't up to me. Um, my God, in terms of creating a new fortune now, oof, that's, that's, that's very, very difficult to say. I mean, I, I'm still pretty new to this locker room, so I kind of really have to see the personalities, uh, you know, um, of the roster and see, you know, what, like, who's, you know, who's, because Fortune basically was a, a heavyweight guy, 
a tag team and an X division guy. And, you know, in the original fortune, I was the X division guy. AJ was the heavyweight guy and beer money, of course, was the tag team. So in my incarnation of fortune, I would be the heavyweight guy. So I would have to uh, find me a, a young, hungry, perhaps arrogant tag team. And, you know, the same goes for an X division guy. I, I honestly can't answer that right now because I would be doing a disservice because I would like to get to know everybody a little bit better, but um, I'll be keeping my eyes open just in case, uh, just in case, you know, I want to, uh, you know, resurrect fortune between us, between us and the thousands of millions listening, you know, yeah. thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate thank it. you. Thank you, Lee. We appreciate it. That's some food for thought. I, I always yeah, enjoy it. You never those. know, man. Yeah, you never it's know. a little speculation. It's fun. Yeah. Uh, so we hit Ireland and Scotland. We can't forget about England. Let's check in with George from What Do You Call It podcast. George, thank you for joining us. How's it going, everyone? Frankie, awesome to hey. see you. Um, thank you. Saw you wrestle in the UK a few times uh, with Impact as well when I met you. And uh, cool guy, Tom, good to see you as well. Thank um, you. My question, it might be a bit random, but I think it will mean a lot just because we've been talking about your highlights in Impact Wrestling. When you do hang up the boots and you go into the Impact Hall of Fame, it's going to happen. Who would you like to induct you? Um, You know, it's going to be tough. I would, uh, you know, it's... I would like to say my wife, Tracy, but she would, she would, you know, beat me within an inch of my life because I would make her speak in public. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I mean, it's a guy who, you know, my career has been tied to for so many years, Christopher Daniels. It's hard to not say him. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's not, if it's not him, you know, if it might, my, my, if I could be greedy, it would be my three best friends in the business. It'd be Chris Daniels, Samoa Joe and AJ Styles. That's yeah. my, that's my crew, man. Uh, but you know, if I had to have one guy, I guess that knows me better than anyone else, certainly it has to be Christopher Daniels. It's a no brainer. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. Just quick one as well. What's your favorite Metallica song? Just because your logo obviously has been in. Oh yeah. Oh God. Off. I mean, <laughs> that, that changes on a daily basis. I mean, I can, you know, one day it's going to be, uh, the God that failed from the black album. The next day it's going to be creeping death. The next day it's going to be leper Messiah. The next day it's going to be a new one. Like, you know, like Lexi Turner, it's. I just I, I I love the band so much. Um, it depends on depends on my mood. That's cool, man. Thank you, guys. I pinch myself. I didn't ask that, but take Thank care. You, and I'm glad you're back. Take care. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank man. you, George. We appreciate. It. Music is so based on mood. Like if you ask somebody what's your oh, favorite yeah. song, it's like ask me how I'm feeling. You know, one hundred percent, man. Yep. <laughs> Uh, we'll head back to our domestic media here in the United States. Up next is Jason McVeigh from Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Jason, thanks for being on. Thanks, Tom. Hi, Frankie. How are you? Good, man. How you doing? I'm going to confuse you with the PWI, but uh, Northern Ireland accent. So, <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. Cool. Now, yeah, now I'm really thrown. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Frankie, X Division has been a huge part of your career. You've been a huge part of the X Division's existence. Give us your thoughts on kind of where the division is at today. Some of the, the wrestlers involved with it, um, especially maybe a Trey Miguel, who's, who's leading the X Division at the moment. Uh, couldn't, I, I kind of look at it like a, like a, like a proud uncle, you know, or proud father, uh, you know, seeing, seeing what it's become, seeing the matches these guys have. And like you said, somebody like Trey Miguel, who's another guy who I absolutely want to get in there and mix it up with. Uh, I think he's doing great from a character standpoint and a wrestler standpoint, but yeah, it's, 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 it's cool. It's cool because I was, you know, among the first crop of these guys, you know, that when, People didn't know what the X Division was. It was defined by who was in it, which was Jerry Lynn, Low Key, AJ Styles, Amazing Red, Petey Williams, The Machine Guns, myself, uh, Samoa Joe, so many guys. So to see what it's become, to see the level that, it, that the guys have taken it to, and to see guys come up that are still proud to be X Division wrestlers. And I've had guys in the locker room tell me that, you know, they watched those weekly pay-per-views and they wanted to be in the X Division which to me is kind of mind blowing. Cause I, you know, a, I can't believe that was that long ago when I'm that old and B it's just really cool to see that, like, you know, what we helped create and what helped put impact slash TNA on the map is still around and going stronger than ever. Um, I, again, I wear it like a badge of honor uh, winning the X division title again last year was uh, you know, something I didn't have on my bingo card in 2022 but I'm very, very proud to have won it from an incredible guy like, like Speedball. And, uh, you know, 
with this crew of exhibition guys, um, I can only see it uh, moving on to bigger and better things and being featured even more. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Appreciate you, Jason. Yeah, 20 years of history behind the exhibition title. Trey Miguel has a picture of the title tattooed on his leg. I saw that. That's so cool, man. Yeah, See, like right there, that's so cool. It's very cool. Uh, coming up next is Jason, uh, or I'm sorry, after Jason, no, sorry, this is uh, Joey Carney of the Angle Podcast. Joey, thanks for being on. Hey, how are you guys? How, how you guys doing? Uh, I was waiting for somebody to finally uh, mention the Ride the Lightning shirt, so kudos right to the for finally hitting now. <laughs> I, was, I was, what's happening? <laughs> um, so my question is basically, uh, the process that you went through, Frankie, to get back to Impact should really uh, inspire so many guys and girls in the locker room. The theme really being, as you said, uh, bet on yourself. To you, what's the difference between betting on yourself early on in your career and betting on yourself at this stage in your career? Well, um, you know, I, I and I've, I've had conversations with with younger talent and I, you know, I've said that, you know, one thing that I wish I would have done more of early on in my career is standing up for myself. Uh, you know what that means is not to be a problem or a hassle or constantly complaining or whining. Sometimes you have to stand up for yourself um, and kind of betting on yourself kind of encompasses standing up for yourself. Uh, you know, I, I can't tell you how many people over the years and especially recently just have said, you know, I just sit back and take the money, just collect the paycheck. And people that say that usually have never been in that position, but um, I'm not, I'm not wired that way. Uh, you know, there may be a time in my career where, you know, I feel like taking it easy and sitting back and, you know, working less hard that's not right now. Uh, I still, you know, am, am still firing on all cylinders in the ring. I still have so much to offer, uh, from an in-ring and behind the scenes perspective. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just a matter of, yeah. And I, if, if, if me doing what I did can inspire somebody, I mean, that's great. I mean, that's, that's why I'm in this, you know, I want to entertain. I want, you know, I want people to bet on themselves. Um, cause if you believe in yourself, more often than not, that's a safe bet. Uh, it, it's worked out well for me. Uh, every time I've done it, I wish I would have done it a lot more early on on my career. Uh, but this time, uh, the minute I walked out in Atlanta at center stage, it all felt right. And I kind of, you know, I kind of um, patted myself on the back, a la Barry Horowitz, and said, you know, you made the right decision. Uh, you finally bet on yourself. And um, uh, just, you know, I think my stock has rised just by, you know, re-debuting on impact and going forward. Um, so I'm, I'm thrilled with my decision and I really hope that can help and inspire anyone that, you know, is on the fence about, you know, a predicament in their life. Appreciate the time guys. And again, uh, like everybody else has been saying, welcome back to impact, Frankie. Thanks man. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Joey. Uh, up next is Michael of Lucha Libre online. Michael, what's going on? Michael, we got you. Michael's had enough of my nonsense. <laughs> Here I am. Oh, there you are. <laughs> hey, Tom. Hello, Frankie. Hey, Michael. Hey. Let me put the camera on. There we go. All right. Here we are. Okay. Oh. Uh, how are you guys today? Good. How are you doing? Great. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for having me in. Frankie, yes. are you looking forward to any specific mashup with any Impact Wrestling talent? You know, just going back to the guys I've mentioned, um, you know, like I'm, I'm looking forward to those first time matchups. Again, a guy like Trey Miguel, who is the epitome of the X division right now, a guy like Moose, who I have wrestled in tag team action, but never in singles, a guy like Eddie Edwards, a guy like Ace Austin, a guy like Chris Bay, uh, you know, anytime I can get in there with Alex Shelley or Chris Saban, uh, you know, certainly any one of those guys. Um, a guy like Joe Henry, who's, you know, making a lot of noise, uh, certainly, uh, Josh Alexander, uh, you know, I, I, that match is very special, very, very important to me and, um, would like to revisit that, um, you know, sooner rather than later. Uh, but again, you look at across the board and, um, uh, a guy like Torus, uh, you know, he, I was in a, um, I was in a match where he was involved and, uh, that's a special talent, very unique look, very incredible athlete, great wrestler. 
I'd love to get in there with him and just blend our two styles. And I think we could do some really, uh, some really great stuff. So yeah, it's just, uh, you know, I, I want to, I want to literally anybody on the roster right now, I want to be in the ring with them. That sounds amazing. Thank you guys very much. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Michael. Thank you. Uh, we're heading back around the world. Uh, next is uh, Katharina from Wrestling Infos, Germany. All right. Katharina, are you with us? Yes. Hello. There you are. Beautiful. Yes. We okay. <laughs> hey. Uh, nice. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for answering all our question. I want to know. Do you want to concentrate more on singles wrestling or can you also imagine being part of a tech team again? And if so, do you have someone in mind already? Um, so I've spent a great deal of my career um, doing tag team wrestling, uh, you know, for the better part of almost a decade, I was a tag team with Christopher Daniels. And, you know, before that early on, the stuff I did with Michael Shane and before that, the stuff I did with Nova, um, so, and I love tag team wrestling. I very much love the art form of tag team wrestling. Uh, I'm certainly not opposed to being a tag team, but for the foreseeable future, I really want to concentrate on me as a singles wrestler. Um, you know, again, part of me coming here and part of me uh, betting on myself and on all of that stuff that I've said is, you know, me believing in myself as a singles wrestler and the type of the caliber of wrestler I am and can be. Uh, I want to be a world champion. I want to be a singles world champion. Uh, I've had multiple tag team titles in multiple companies, and uh, that's all great. And I love it. And I cherish my tag team matches. But going forward, I'm in the business of Frankie Kazarian, the world champion, Frankie Kazarian, the singles wrestler. Now, if I had to, uh, if I had to pick a a, uh, a a tag team partner, I mean. You know, it might be somebody like a Eddie Edwards who has that tag team experience and and singles, or it might be someone like a Trey Miguel, you know, who can get in there and do all the work for me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You know, somebody that's a great athlete like that. Uh, there's, I mean, uh, you know, I, I don't think I could look across the roster and have a bad pick. But right now, I'm really focused uh, on, on on me as a singles wrestler, my goals and my aspirations. Thank you. Really looking forward for your matches. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thank you, Katharina. Uh, up next is Nathan from Real Wrestling in the UK. Nathan, how are you? Hi, thank you very much, the two of you, for having me on. Uh, Tom, great to see you. Frankie, it's fantastic to have you back in Impact. Uh, my producer is going to kill me if I don't ask his question today. So uh, my question for you, Frankie, is now that you are back in Impact, the title is on the line. Okay, hypothetically, here we go. Who is in your ultimate X match, your dream match, anyone you could book? Okay, how many people are we talking? How many opponents do I have? Yeah. To... There because there's been X yeah, matches. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there were three in the first one. There have been as many as like six, something oh, like I've that. I've been I've been in an ultimate X gauntlet that had like 18 <laughs> or 20, so they can go nuts. So let's let's let's, put let's go with the, let's go with four. Let's go with four. Four. Four in addition to me. Yes. Um, now, is this uh, people on the roster now, or is this people? A that, mixture, uh, a complete mixture, you know, roster now and past, you know, people that aren't there who you'd love. So to all, 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 impact, all impact wrestlers, past or present, correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay, so if we're picking four, I have to throw Chris Saban in there because he was in the first one with me. Um, I am going to go back into the past and put Amazing Red in there. Mm. because he uh, is responsible so much for the style of wrestling that we see now and doesn't get the credit he deserves. So uh, certainly Chris Saban, amazing red. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and throw um, Trey Miguel in there since he's kind of leading the charge as we speak uh, from the, from the new crop. And uh, you know what? I'm going to go with a legend. Uh, and I think, he was in one of these matches, but I'm not sure. But I'm going to throw Kurt Angle in there, uh, you know, because Kurt Ooh. Angle is, you know, the type of athlete that could do anything. Um, you know, you, you know, he could he probably, you know, climb up to the top of the axe and moonsault off. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Chris Saban, 
Amazing Red, Trey Miguel, Kurt Angle, Frankie Kazarian. Frankie Kazarian wins the match. Amazing. That's exactly what we like to hear. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Frankie. Thank you, Tom. Sure. Have a good day. Thank you, Nathan. Thank we you. appreciate it. Yeah, you got to go over. You got to go over. <laughs> oh, yeah. If, yeah. If, if I'm booking, if I'm booking <laughs> the territory and booking my own match, I'm going over, no doubt. Come on. I just saw on the Instagram uh, account for Impact Wrestling a match from Once Upon a Time between Kurt Angle and Amazing Red. So uh, that's available. Oh, on that Impact match was Plus. so good. It was, it was. It was like six or seven minutes. But it was, was crazy. So good breakneck the stuff that that kurt was doing at that point in time and red it's just unbelievable i uh, will never get the credit yeah no, i it's it's a travesty um just a reminder to the media we have about 15 minutes left here with frankie so again please raise your hand virtually uh if you haven't asked a question and want to uh again one question per so uh let's move on now to uh sam uh in the uk as well uh, at near falls media sam how's it going uh guys it's going well yourselves Good. Very oh, good. another Sam Roberts. Oh, yeah, man. No, he must have heat with uh, ours. Not yet. Not yet. He's not found out about me, so I'm, I'm uh, worried. I'm telling that. him tomorrow, yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> um, Frankie, um, it was about seven years in between your, your last major stint with Impact before returning a couple of years ago for, for your one-off appearances. In that seven-year gap, were there any major changes to the company that you saw from afar that you were happy to see take place? I mean, obviously, like, there was, you know... <laughs> some massive changes um uh, management wise i um you know when i left uh there were people in charge that uh you know i didn't necessarily have the utmost confidence in um you know and uh maybe that's just because i didn't have real good relationships with them or i just didn't you know have the time to make good relationships with them um uh, you know coming back and you know i've known scott demore for over 20 years uh you know, he's a friend, um, a very, very bright guy, very knowledgeable, very passionate about pro wrestling. So, you know, when he kind of took over the helm, I remember thinking, and I, I don't recall exactly when that was several years ago. I remember thinking, this is good for that brand. Um, you know, if they continue to let Scott steer the ship, they're going to be in good hands because I know, you know, how much this company means to him. And I know, you know, how bright of a guy he is and how, you know, the good ideas he has. So coming back and, you know, seeing him in charge and what he's done and the team he's built around him and the roster he's put together, uh, it, 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 like I've said, I have so much confidence in this company and every, you know, in terms of entering, in terms of the creative teams, in, term, in terms of uh, those in management, uh, top to bottom. Uh, so that's a big difference for me. Uh, you know, when I came back and I first came back in 2021 and did a quick quick little shot with um, Kenny Omega and, and, and Gallows and Anderson and um, you know, and uh, just walking in there and like, that was kind of, for me, it was uh, at the time I thought it was closure. Cause you know, when I left, I left on fine terms, but it was like, I kind of left and I was ready to, I was ready to go. Uh, you know, it, it ended fine, but it didn't end great in terms of, you know, uh, my relationship with the company coming back and seeing what has become now was like, I was like, okay, this is good closure. And then coming back last year, I was like, oof, this is, this is so good. I don't know if I want to leave. And now here we are there, you know, back as a full-time guy. So that, that tells you right there, everything you need to know. Thank you very much for the answer. Enjoy the rest of your press event. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Next is Joey G from wrestling headlines. Joey. I believe you're uh, muted. Hey, Tom, there Frank, thank you so much for having me today. Good to see you both. Thanks for yeah, being man. on. Uh, yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, Frankie, you know, one of my favorite uh, character incarnations that you had um, was the Elite Hunter in AEW. I thought I love the aggression. I love how uh, things became personal uh, with your history, not only with the group, but with your history going back with SCU. Um, is this persona or that persona of the Elite Hunter or just that aggression, that like, hard as nails, Frankie Kazarian. Is that something we might be able to expect with this run with you and Impact, that now that you're uh, campaigning for your uh, big solos run? I mean, yeah, that's just, you know, that that was basically born out of, um, you know, me, like the, that character that I did not pick the name or ever endorse the name. It's just something they said and it stuck, but that's a whole nother podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but that that that, you know, that was based on the on on anger and aggression on how you know me and Christopher Daniels as a team was ended because of you know outside interference and it was like it was basically you know 
this time I'm out for blood. I'm out for myself. And, you know, I kind of changed my in-ring style after that. And, you know, I've, you know, a little bit harder hitting and a little bit more aggressive. And a lot of that character is still in Frankie Kazarian going forward, um, you know, in terms of attitude and in terms of in-ring style. So, you know, you kind of, what you got now is kind of a hybrid of, you know, the, the character that Frankie Kazarian was early on in Impact and what I became at the end of our tag run with uh, myself and Christopher Daniels and SCU. And, and uh, it, it's helped me a lot in terms of, you know, creating uh, a new persona and freshening up a little bit and, and uh, you know, creating a character that's now ready to be the singles guy here in Impact Wrestling. Well, thank you so much for your answer. And Impact is lucky to have you. Same with you, Tom. Thank you both very much and have a good one. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Joey. Appreciate that. Uh, next, uh, sticking with our international audience, uh, Himanshu from 411 Mania. Himanshu? Good afternoon, guys. This is Himanshu from 411 Mania. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you. Uh, my question to Kaz is a little bit of a controversial one. Uh, you've been with AEW since its inception. You've seen that talent roster grow to what it is today. And with a growing talent roster and limited spots on television, there is bound to be a sense of discontentment among certain talent in terms of the opportunities that they've been getting or the lack thereof. Do you think we might see more talent from AEW in the near future, take inspiration from yourself or, or uh, Alan Angels or Jonathan Gresham and bet on themselves and cross the line? Um, it's possible. I mean, you know, a lot of, a lot of guys were locked in for a while. Um, you know, uh, I mean, I was, I was, I was locked in. I was, you know, but Again, if I can, you know, if I can, you know, fall on the sword, quote unquote, to give uh, people inspiration, if they feel like they are, you know, like they are sitting on the bench when they should be in the starting lineup, um, you know, if me doing what I did can inspire somebody to kind of raise their hand and say, hey, you know, what about me? Uh, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not, this isn't what I signed up to do then that's great. But that has to be up to the talent. Um, you know, uh, again, a lot of guys are happy just being kind of in the middle of the pack and, and making good money and just being on the roster. Sometimes that's enough for people. Other oftentimes it's not, it certainly wasn't for me. Um, but you know, when you have that big of a roster and the roster they've assembled is, is huge and it's full of incredible talent. Um, it's bound to happen that certain people are going to be lost in the shuffle. Uh, how, each individual feels about that varies. Um, you know, uh, it just matters, you know, it de depends on how much they believe in themselves, how much effort they want to put in. You only get out of this what you put into it. So again, if me doing what I did, my story, my decision can inspire anybody, uh, I'm all for it. Um, again, like I said, if you bet on yourself, that's a safe bet. And, uh, you know, we all know what is going to bring us happiness. So, you know, a lot of guys might be happy where they're at. Uh, some guys and girls may want more for themselves, and I'm all for that. Go out and get it, man. Great. Thank you so much, Kaz, and it's great to have you back in Impact. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Himanshu. Uh, and again, uh, we're closing uh, minutes here of this uh, Impact Wrestling Press Pass podcast. That's easy to say. Uh, so please raise your hand virtually if you've got any other questions that you'd like to get to Kaz. And again, we ask that uh, the questions stick to Frankie and his future with Impact Wrestling. He's had the chance to address his transition from AEW to Impact. So I uh, just want to remind you there. Up next, our friends at Wrestling with Honor. Are you on with us? Hi, Sam. Hi, Frankie. How are you, How you doing? doing? I'm Joe from Friends. Uh, it's a honor for me uh, with you uh, today. Um, Frankie, yeah. cre simply question, is there any chance, any little chance to see you again with Christopher Daniels? Uh, I mean, Christopher Daniels is contracted to AEW, um, so uh, not sure you're going to see us in a match together. Uh, you know, still, still uh, one of my best friends. He was my best fan at my wedding. Uh, so, I mean, if you happen to be at a, uh, you know, if we happen to be in the same town, you know, or if we're at a signing or something together, you know, you, you might see us bellied up to the bar together. Uh, you know, you'll certainly still see us, you know, chatting and whatnot. But, um, you know, for the foreseeable future, uh, I don't think that's a possibility. Um, but Chris Daniels is a friend outside of professional wrestling. So, and he'll always be someone that's, you know, 
in my life. Uh, but right now, uh, you know, I am here concentrated on impact wrestling and that is my main focus. Great. Thank you guys. And friends love impact wrestling. Thanks, man. Thank you. Uh, this will be the last question that we have time for with Frankie. So I want to thank everybody that's uh, hopped on here on our official Facebook page. Uh, we've had members of the media from uh, more than 10 different countries. So we really appreciate the interest in covering Impact Wrestling. Uh, we're going to end with uh, one last question here from Stefan from the Squared Circle podcast. Stefan. Hi, guys. Uh, how are you doing? Are you doing well? Good. How are you? Um, it's a question that I asked uh, Valkyrie in a recent interview that I did with her, uh, which I want to ask you, which might be a bit different. Uh, when the time eventually comes, and thank goodness it's not any time soon, you decide to hang up your boots and uh, step away from in-ring competition. Do you have any aspirations, and if so, which uh, to get involved in still within the business, or do you think you have aspirations away from wrestling when that time comes? Great question. Um, you know, I have always really kind of had it in my mind that once I was done in ring that I would kind of not sever ties, but I would walk away and do my own thing. Um, you know, I always say, uh, you know, I'm just a wrestler, you know, when it's been offered to me in the past with other companies like, Oh, Hey, do you want a title? Do you want to do, do you want to be something? And I would always no, thank you. I'm just a wrestler. And, and I don't say that as an insult. I say that I wear that as a badge of honor. I'm, I'm a wrestler through and through. Uh, you know, as I get, you know, as I get older, more mature and learn more, you know, I, I, it's, it's obvious that I have, you know, right now I have 25 years of knowledge and experience and, you know, experience is the one thing you can't teach. Um, so I think there is a position, a spot for me to be that, you know, that agent, that coach, that, that trainer, that something, uh, to help, you know, pass what I know down to the next generation. That's, that's, how the business works. It's, it's centrifugal. Um, you know, killer Kowalski gained all this knowledge and, you know, shared it with the lucky students he had. And I was fortunate enough to be one of them. Um, having said that, I don't know. It's, I'm, it's really going to have to determine on, on when, when I do, um, eventually hang it up inside the ring. I don't think that's gonna be for a long time. You guys are stuck with me for a while. Uh, but uh, it's going to really be with where I'm at, you know, as a father and a husband, you know, I still have a 10 year old boy that I, you know, I want to, you know, spend as much time as with him as I can. But um, yeah, it really, it's, it's a natural, it's natural to say that I should just, you know, really focus on doing something behind the scenes in wrestling, but, you know, I, I might just want to walk, walk away and focus on music or something else. So it's a great question. I'm really undecided, man. It's, um, it, it, but at the same time, it's I wrestling has been a part of my life for 25 years. It's hard to imagine all of a sudden the entirety of it being gone. So, um, you know, I, I, you know, I'd like, like to say I probably will be involved somehow. Maybe, I don't know. Sorry. That was a real poor answer. That was a long, well, long way to answer to say, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, take time out, spend time, and, and maybe it's something that you, after taking time away, you kind of think, okay, I, I, I know what I, what I should be doing now going forward, sure. and, and it will come to you when it comes to you. But uh, yeah. yeah, great to see you rocking the Metallica, uh, as oh, always. Yeah. Uh, Tom, thank you. Frankie, thank you. Great to have thank you back, you. and uh, I look forward to seeing you get that world title. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. That's the idea. Thank you. Cheers, thank you, thank Stefan. I uh, appreciate it. I want to say a big thank you to all the media members that joined us here live on our Facebook page. A reminder to head to impactwrestling.com because we have a ton of big events coming up this year. As I mentioned, in February, we'll be in Las Vegas. In March, we'll be back in Canada. Windsor, Ontario will be also in Canada, in Toronto, in April. And don't forget about the Chicago Season Pass ticket that's going to become available starting this Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern on impactwrestling.com. Frankie, thank you very much for being on on here uh enjoy the rest of your day man i really appreciate your time uh, thanks for having me man. it was great was glad to answer all the questions and i'll see everybody soon cool don't forget tune in tomorrow night for impact wrestling on access tv